Uh, John, Zeke, great to have you on the show today. Uh, could you give us an introduction to yourselves and to CSWAP? Yeah, hey guys, I'm John Kravitz. I'm the CEO of CSWAP. Hi, I'm uh, Ezekiel Smigel. I'm the uh, COO. Yeah, so CSWAP's a next generation DeFi project, and our focus is on user experience and uh, support for a range of different asset types. Nice. And so people, when they, especially if they've been involved in the Cardano DeFi ecosystem, when they hear, you know, CSWAP and, you know, another DeFi protocol, their question may be another DEX. Like what, what is this? What, what differentiates this? What makes it new? What makes it interesting? So to put that to you guys, what, what about CSWAP is the differentiator, the thing that sets you guys apart? Yeah, I mean, first off, we're really focused on creating a best-in-class user experience. You know, one of the complaints we've been hearing from the community is that our UI and UX is not on par with what we've been seeing on other chains. And so we've really put a lot of intention and focus to understanding what Cardano users need and want out of a DEX. And... Um, yeah, we're also really focused on the tokenomics and yield opportunities, which we feel are one of the most important aspects of DeFi. So we have eight gamified staking and farming opportunities with our token. And um, for CSwap, there's a 100% fee sharing model across all of our different products. So we already have two products in CSwap Market and CSwap Dex. But um, we're planning on releasing a couple more products this year, and pretty much all of those fees and ADA are going to flow back to the stakers and farmers on our DEX. So as opposed to an inflationary DEX token that may bleed value over time, you know, we, ex we anticipate that the C-Swap token is going to just become more and more valuable over time and have a greater utility. Well, that's a, I'd like to follow up on that is how do you guys think about alignment with your users and your community um, as a DeFi protocol? Yeah, so essentially because users stake token to earn rewards from that, that derive from the fees, uh, this, this aligns the incentives of the community with the team. So the team earns ADA the same way the community does by holding and staking its own tokens. So we believe this is a much, you know, health, this is a healthy relationship to have with the community and uh, it aligns incentives between the team and the community. So you guys mentioned support for multiple different kinds of assets. What do you have going in that space? We're working on a, a web 2.5 platform for real world assets that we think is literally a game changer. You know, what we're talking about is potentially a $450 trillion market potential to essentially tokenize everything. And you know, we think Cardano, especially when combined with the privacy features of Midnight, can lead all blockchains in what might be crypto's most important use case in terms of real world assets. And so our, the support we've already created for NFTs, simple RWAs and tokens, you know, with an AMM is going to give us a huge competitive advantage in, in this uh, important opportunity. And so you guys have been both in the ecosystem, participating in conversations, watching the development and growth, both of the core protocol and of the DeFi ecosystem that you're in now. So what kinds of challenges and opportunities do you see in the Cardano DeFi ecosystem today? I, I like to focus on opportunities first because I just have more of a growth mindset. And ultimately, I see uh, new lending protocols launching. We have perps. You know, we have a, a beautiful new DEX uh, created by yours truly. I think this is really going to, you know, stimulate the ecosystem. Uh, we want to get the liquidity moving around the ecosystem. You know, having, uh, you know, kind of entrenched uh, leaders is great in terms of visibility. But, um, you know, we want to see increased metrics in, in TVL and volume and shake things up a little bit. And I, I think... Um, that's really what Cardano DeFi 2.0 is, is about. And I think one of the challenges for us is we just weren't ready with Cardano DeFi during the last quote unquote bull run. And I think we're, you know, really prepared uh, for this current market cycle. I think there's a ton of opportunities. And really the challenge is just kind of 
uh, shedding the old narrative that, uh, you know, Cardano DeFi, uh, you know, isn't hip or the place to be. Uh, I think it's a green field, and I feel like the fact that we've been slept on presents a huge opportunity for anybody who's paying attention because we're just far less saturated and less, uh, quote-unquote, played out than some of the other DeFi uh, ecosystems uh, in blockchain. So it's a huge, huge opportunity for for everybody involved. Yeah. Well, so for those people who are paying attention and they want to get involved um, with you or they want to follow what you're doing, where should they go and what, what, what opportunities do they have to connect? Well, I mean, if you're a liquidity provider and you've had liquidity on some of the other DEXs, really take a look at what we have to offer. I mean, the staking APRs, the farming APRs, and and even um, you know the upside potential of our token. You know, we're we're also on the cusp of providing new features that I think is going to get our decks a lot of attention, maybe even some viral attention. And there will be some functionality that that um, just isn't available on any other DeFi protocol explicitly for advanced uh, DeFi users, um, liquidity providers, uh, stakers, and farmers. So be on the lookout for version 1.0, and we're going to have a huge liquidity boost event where the yield opportunities are going to be in the triple digits for some of Cardano's top tokens. So definitely stay tuned for that. Excellent. Well, John, Zeke, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having us.